I cannot go farther today than to say that it is very probable there will be heavy fighting in the Mediterranean and elsewhere before the leaves of autumn fall. The invasion of Sicily by Allied forces under the supreme command of General Eisenhower has already initiated the beginning of that heavy fighting. This time a year ago, Eisenhower, who had just come over here, expressed sober confidence in a talk at the Washington Club. Our job over here is with your help and with God's help to do our part to carry that war to final victory. No matter how long it takes, the American people say, and we say, and we hope, and we know that you say, it shall be won. As at Pantelleria, the assault was preceded by very heavy aerial bombardment. In fact, scenes taken at that time serve as an illustration, a pattern of the attack on Sicily. Though, of course, the scale of attack must be multiplied many times. Just as the taking of Pantelleria was a necessary prelude to the next invasion, so the capture of Sicily is itself a prelude to still greater operations. However the fortunes of war may go, the opening of the invasion went according to plan. Aircraft from Malta, only about 60 miles away, played an important part in that plan, of course. Fighters and fighter bombers took off from that much bombed island for the attack, to harry the enemy and provide an air umbrella. Airborne troops led the invasion itself, but before the big show there had been many rehearsals which included every part of their work, from packing and stowing equipment containers to the practice landing. The climax of months of intensive training ever since Britain began building up an airborne force. When the day came, skillful piloting got the glider troops down close to their objectives in spite of the worst the defenders could do. Troops followed. Units of a force with considerable experience of action in raids over France, as at Brunval, for example, and in the first operations in Tunisia, where they adopted the role of infantry in the early days. Paratroops and glider troops were the first to land, and they did great work in the few hours before their comrades landed in the early morning from the sea. Once again, the Mediterranean was dotted for mile upon mile with the ships of our invading force. In the original landings in North Africa, more than 500 transports were convoyed. For the invasion of Sicily, the number is unknown, but the landing craft were on time to the minute. Here's the actual start of just a few of them. Certainly there must have been a huge fleet to put the expedition ashore at all the various points between Syracuse and Licata, a stretch of around about a hundred miles, rather like making landings all the way along from Margit to Beachy Head. The fact that landing craft were able to approach so vast a stretch of coast is eloquent of the mastery obtained by Allied air-sea forces over Mussolini's private lake. Opposition during the actual landings, we are told, varied from place to place. At some points it was spirited, at others only slight and we must be thankful that early casualties were far less than might have been expected for the primary establishment of a bridgehead. Heavy 
brave fighting followed, that was obviously bound to come. But thanks to magnificently planned cooperation from the air and on the sea, the opening of this operation was a shining success. All this time, the Royal Navy's guns had been pouring shells into the coast defences, silencing enemy batteries and covering the landings. Yes, the Royal Navy did a great job, and it was present in great strength. Berlin names at least four battleships, King George V and a sister ship, and Rodney and Nelson. But whatever the Allies had there in the way of big ships, the Italian Navy was at that time at any rate conspicuous by its absence. And you can bet the Royal Navy kept a very keen lookout for Mussolini's high-speed fleet. But protection against enemy ships was only one part of the Navy's task in this, the biggest combined operations the world has yet known. Theirs too was the task of getting the expedition and all its equipment to the beaches. And after that, to ensure the punctual arrival of reinforcements of men and machines and food and supplies of all kinds. The task of the Allied troops was to secure the bridgeheads and advance inland. They were commanded by the old firm, Alexander, Deputy CMC, and Montgomery, commanding British troops. Monty was in London in May. These shots of him have only just been released. The Allied invasion force included men from the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Americans, whose comrades are fighting the Japs on the other side of the globe, landed on the south coast of Sicily. The Canadians, after years of hard training in Britain, were also in the forefront. And the boys from the old country were right there too. Our thoughts are with them all in their tremendous task.